my name is it's been a pain all my life. It's D L D period L period Martin. I was born in Cobus, North Carolina. My connection with the CCCs was through my father. And in the early 30s, my father got a job with the CCCs because he was experienced in building road work and that sort of thing, and uh, culverts and anything involved rock work, masonry. And he, he used to have about four years with this one up here. After that, I decided I wanted to go into CCCs, and I did. They were taking recruits later in the 30s, and I uh, come down here and signed up, and they, they accepted me. I was, uh, I was just barely old enough, I think I was 16. I'm Bud Akins. Uh, I was born about a mile and a half from here south, and uh, my mother's name was Fanny Akins. My father's name was Robert E. Akins. Uh, I was been here all my life. I was lucky to graduate from high school here in Union County, and uh, lucky to have my career with the highway department, Department of Transportation, for 34 years, and I had an office here in town. My father was involved with the, the CCC, and he, he was in the uh, local camp and then uh, the uh, Towns County camp. I was born in 38, and that's when he was working, you know, and, and then after that, World War II broke out, and uh, so he was like the rest of them. Why they, um, a lot of the CCC boys uh, went to, into the military, and my father did too. He was in the Navy. Pat Akins, yes, he was the second cousin of mine, and also his brother was in the CCC, Bon L. Akins and uh, they were both in the, in the CCC also. And they was guaranteed a salary of uh, $30 per month. And that was a lot of money back in those days and after the Depression. Well, back then, uh, wasn't no jobs. You know, worked on the farm. I, I helped neighbors on the farm. They, they only paid you 50 cents a day when I was four week. And when, when, when I think it was 39, when I come 18, I joined the CC camps. When I happened to be down there that morning, I'd walk from Cooper's Creek across through the mountains and come down to me and another boy. And Ranger Woody pulled up and he said, ah, that's a little old Harkins boy from down there on such and such creek. He had a name for the little creek, Davis Creek that I lived on down in Cooper's Creek. He had a kind of a dirty name for it. He brought it out. Plenty of all the women that brought their boys from Cummins, Blue Ridge, and Clayton and everywhere was on the company street sitting there. But he, and then at a while he said, what are you doing up here, sonny boy? And I said, well, I want to get in these CC camps. He said, you can't make it in that, and so forth and so on. I said, yeah, I, what do you want to get in there for? And I said, well, we need, we need help, you know. So he said, you can't get in them CCs. I said, I can. He said, now listen, son, I'm going to bring it out just like he said it. He said, you've got to have a Peter big as a whole hunter to get in these CCs. I said, you can help me get in there. He said, you ain't got that, we are beat. Well, my name is Herbert Alton. Brimer. I was born on July the 6th in the year 1916. I went to elementary school at Lucky Street Elementary School. I graduated from there and went from there to Murphy Junior High School and graduated from there. And from there I went to Tech High. It's an Atlanta school, and but I didn't graduate, and I left there to go to work because it was during the Depression, and my family was in destitute circumstances, and they needed some income, and I went to work to bring some of that income in. A representative of the um, government came to my mother 
uh, and asked her if I'd be interested in being going in the CC, CCCs. And she said she'd ask me, and she did. And I, I said, yeah, I'd like to. I was then about uh, 16 or 17 years old. We had a small crusher and we crushed gravel and we graveled Wolfpin Road and uh, them down around Cooper's Creek and all in down there. And then we dug lots of trails, hiking trails. And, in the mountains. Then we have to get out rocks, a lot of rocks that they built them, walls around Bogle. Well, there's a, a Woodward Holland Road just to the turned off or to. Wolfpin Gap went around the backside of Slaughter. Okay. We we helped roll rocks off of that mountain down to we could get to it with a dump truck, and they they'd haul them over there to Vogel. And uh, I didn't help. Uh, lay rock or nothing. And then up there where the building shed on the Blood Mountain. Mm -hmm. We carried rocks, all the rock work we could get there. We just we took about a dozen of us go up there. But in the CC camps, I've done a little of everything. Uh, ever so often, if you didn't, didn't go home on weekends, they want you to work in the mess hall, horse dishes. <laughs> so I've I done, done that one weekend, and they wanted me to. They had a bakery in one end of the mess hall. They wanted me to work, help in the bakery. I, I worked in there until about six months or so. I liked that for you. We baked all kinds of bread, loaf bread. Well, I went in as just ordinary recruit. And I guess I was lucky. I. I moved up the line. I was, I was supply sergeant when I when I left. And that's about as high as you can go in the, as a recruit. I mean, as an enlisted person. Oh, I made big money. I made forty-five dollars a month. I got my bed, and my food too, and and some clothing. See, I still wore a pair of those army pants. When I went in, we were getting eight at the camp, and the home was getting uh, 22, and that that was good. That was a, a good help, you know. But the, but we began to pick up jobs. that began to pick up a little bit by that time. See, the CC started in 32, and it was one of Roosevelt's uh, new deals, you know. Mm -hmm. And WPA, we worked with the WPA. All right, we left, and my first job that I remember out on was over here at Lake Winfield Scott. And uh, I was just working, and uh, the, the windfield was just about about closed, ready to open, you see. And they were bringing sand in that white sand in there, and them dump trucks, and them big old dump trucks. I believe about 36 models or something like that, dumping that sand, you know. And I tell you, I just told him, I was, oh, I, had, I was a big heavy equipment operator, too. I had a, a shovel and a wheelbar. <laughs> and I would load that sand on that wheelbar, and scattered on the beach. And also they brought a little fine gravel in, we called it squeegee. 
and I would load that on the wheelbar and push it around the trails and put a little on the trails and work there and built barbecue grills and whatnot. And, and I had to, and then the next job I went to, you know where Wolfbean Gap is up here. And going back, you take a, you take a left and go around approximately two miles right, right on the south side of the Coosie Ball, and there's a big rock hole. I worked in that. Now that was work. And we busted the damn rock down to where you could go in the crusher. I fed the crusher a little bit, but I didn't like it. I didn't like them big jaws slamming them rocks and you push them and work them trying to get them going through. But anyway, I did that a while and then I worked on the roads and and if you if you want to put a job in for table waiting, you know, when 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 the when the, when the for breakfast and supper, evening meal, you went when the when the bread pan got bread, a bowl of taters got empty, you run to the kitchen and got to fill back up and put it on the table. Bread the same way. Run out of bread, you grab the bread, pan it up, plate it up, and took it to the kitchen, fill it up, roll it back, and put it on the table. Call that table way. The reason I like that, I didn't really like it, but the reason, if you did table waiting, you didn't have to stand KP on the weekend, so I got to go home every weekend. And when I got ready to go home on Friday evening, I just went out and lit a trail by the train and crossed Structures Creek and Muddy Branch and come out right into my home in Cooper's Creek. And then next, next Sunday evening, I'd leave out and walk back to the camp. All right, when you go through Woody Gap, on this side, you can look and see the tire, the lookout tire, yeah. on Black Mountain. Right. All right, you see all them pines, mm -hmm. beautiful pines? That was a ball, grass, just like Coosey Ball. Was, now, I got I got an hour to talk about Coosey Ball. I helped put the first steel tire up on Coosey Ball. I was the man that put the buckle of the roof on it. The top, that steel tire, we had an old rock tire there, and we took an old D88 uh, uh, D Caterpillar and pushed that rock one off in there, went down there and took the lights off of a 200-foot observation tire, steel tire down in South Georgia, the military put up, mm -hmm. took, the, took the lights 50, 40, 50 sets, and it's the house, part of it, and we put it on Bradstown Ball. Mm -hmm. And I stayed there to help, I helped start it off at the bottom, and it, Yep, and I was the man that put the buckle of the roof on it. I was a good climber. That's how I come me working with steel, that steel rig a bunch and, and make them. Mm -hmm. But anyway, uh, and the CCs was, uh, uh, we, we set them pines out. And, and the most, one of the most interesting things I done was put, planting them fish. I love to work in them creeks and building ponds across the creek, fish pond. But the CC pond, we built Dockery Lake. You ever hear of that? Oh, yeah. yeah. I've hiked there. Yeah. And uh, we we done that, and I helped put fish up over the shoals where there wasn't no rainbow mm -hmm. in the Blood Mountain cold. And so they did accept me, and had me report to Fort McPherson. And at Fort McPherson, they uh, um, ran me through the procedure, you know and uh, put me in uh, the 22nd Infantry Committee, uh, Company there at Fort McPherson. And the purpose of that was for me to learn cooking. I was there about two weeks. You know how much cooking you learn in two weeks. So then they sent me to a camp in North Georgia, up around uh, Tree, Georgia, out from Clayton. And uh, I got rejected pretty soon as a cook. <laughs> and then I, I went out and worked in, on the road for a week. And the mess officer called me aside and asked me if I'd like to be, uh, become the uh, uh, steward for the uh, officer's mess. And I accepted it. And I loved it, because I could cook each individual's meals and then cook my individual meal. And anyway, I was there for, I guess, six months before our camp broke up and moved to South Carolina. And that's another story, of course. We'd get a quarter of beef in, you know, and we'd butcher it ourselves. Uh, we'd get uh, buy a what they call army cake mix by the 
25-pound cans, you know, about this big. And everything was grits, you know, they'd come in a big bag. And just uh, bigger than that, most things that you would uh, normally find at the grocery store. Because we had had about 200 men in the camp, and you cook meals for 300, 200 men three times a day, and you use up some groceries. Well, uh, in the camp up at uh, a Tree, you know, that's about, uh, <clears throat> about 11 miles from what they call Standing Indian Mountain. Well, we would go hiking, uh, and we'd, we'd hike up the 11 miles to Standing Indian Mountain, and then climb the mountain, talk to the lookout up there, the uh, fire lookout, you know. And, uh, Oh, I remember one time he said, are you guys going to spend the night? And we said, no. He said, well, you better start down now because when that sun goes behind that mountain over there, it's going to be dark. And he was absolutely right. Oh, so I fell in a ditch on the way down because I couldn't see. <laughs> and I can remember my uncle, he played the fiddle, and his band would be on Saturday night playing square dances over there at Winfield Scott. And he told me the story in 1941 when we had the big snow and ice storm then. Uh, he said they went over and played a square dance and the man from such as had a little 40 Ford coupe car and they had checked the ice and the ice was four to five feet deep on uh, Lake Winfield Scott and he got that 40 Ford out there and done loops on the lake and that. I won't ever forget that story my uncle tell me. Sometimes it was cold and the fog would come down on that top. He'd, he'd freeze that fog on your clothes and you'd be as, look as white as a sheep. <laughs> we had all of the foods that are good for you, you know, like fried chicken. <laughs> And uh, we had, uh, we called it slum gullion. It's kind of like a beef stew. And we made biscuits. We had scrambled eggs, fried eggs, ham, bacon, sausage, all of that stuff. Grits. And, uh, you know, and, and, uh, had uh, bread puddings and uh, cake. We'd make cake. and you know, and put icing on it and everything. And uh, so we had all the food that was good for you. And I don't think there's a single person that went in a camp like that and stayed very long that didn't gain weight. Because as I say, this was during the Depression and nobody was, uh, you know, was overweight. I weighed about 110 pounds when I went in. And about six months later, I weighed 135. And it went from there to 150. You know what they call the CCC? was Roosevelt's tree army. And we call the WPA, we piddle around. <laughs> well, I would say the river was so clear. You could look down in the river and see the bottom, you know. And see these brown trout were about a foot long just swimming around in there, it's so pretty. And then we had this uh, swimming pool up above the camp there, self-made, natural, and we treated it like a natural. We went, we went swimming in natural. What up? I'd go to Murphy where they hired him for not leave the officers in Murphy, North Carolina. I had to go down there and uh, I had on a jacket, one that come from the CC camp. That man looked at me and said, you been in the CC camp? I said, yeah. Well, he said, you already know how to work. Yeah, but you'd work. <laughs> I took some courses with the, with the, while I was with the CCC that helped me with the TVA. I did 
they hired me on as a medical technician with a TVA. And I worked with that. And then when I left there, I went into the Navy as a medical technician. The Marines didn't have a, a medical department. And my training I'd taken while I was in the CCs gave me a technician, a medical technician's qualifications. So I was uh, moved up the line on that because I got the highest rating on that when I pulled left. Lake Trolita up here, Vogel State Park, and that was built by the CCC. And then go on to there to Winfield Scott, it was also built by the CCC. I, I know that the CCC fed a many a family in this county, in this area. And I can remember how the people were so blessed to have that. And it was uh, President Roosevelt's favorite project was the CCC. In the depths of the Great Depression of 1933, President Roosevelt created the CCC. Give our young man a job for a nation, he had a plan. Build state and federal parks throughout our beautiful land. They lived in tents and barracks, they all had daily chores. Cut their wood, made their beds, even swept their floor. Crushed rock, built and dug, worked in the rain and mud. Bought fires and rescued people from the Mississippi floods. From the villages, cities and towns, young men traveled from all around. Dollar a day, their lives were changed. Our nation was rearranged for a dollar a day. Just a dollar a day. They blazed the path we hike today in the mountains that we love. The majestic Appalachian Trail, a gift from God above. Take the AT northward, a testament today To the young men of the CCC who work for a dollar a day From the villages, cities and towns, young men traveled from all around For a dollar a day their lives were changed, our nation was rearranged For a dollar a day Just a dollar a day.